I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. Uh, got a lot of stuff to cover here, but uh, before I get into the uh, details of what's happening, I want to uh, share a little tackle tip uh, with you guys on here that uh, I've been doing it for a while and I, I saw a friend who was really surprised by the fact that we were doing this. It's actually a really simple thing. It makes your life a lot easier on your boat or if you're on a sport boat or whatever. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have with these hard baits we fish on bait casts is where do you put the bait when you're you guys will clip it to the reel, you put it on your guide, it's just always in the way. But if you just drill a small hole, I don't know if you can see it, a small hole in the bottom of your reel seat, you can just hook that bait right in there, and then when your rod's in the rod rack with the, the reel out, you're not going to have any more issues with uh, dealing with that bait. And if you want to cast it, it comes out really easy as well. So that's uh, something you could do to... Uh, make your life a lot easier on the boat. And that's probably just like a eighth inch hole. I just use a normal drill, just go nice and slow. Um, any trigger seat, I even know with an aluminum trigger seat. Just take your time, it's real easy to do. And uh, something else we deal with a lot is where to put the service iron. And forever the thing has been to hook it to the back of your reel. Guys will put it on a reel handle like that. There's a lot of bad places to put it. But by adding a small loop of monofilament that you crimp on there. This is 100 pound. I made a little loop goes around the reel post. My jig is always there. And the nice thing is that this keeps a little tension on it now so it doesn't rattle loose and fall out. And also it's real easy to get the jig out of there when you want to cast on something. Not like trying to dig it out of the back of your spool or maybe damage your line. Just a little piece of a 100 pound mono crimped on there. Works fantastic. So if you have a jig stick and you don't like the, I don't like the lugs that come off the side because they always hit my hand when I'm cast because I've actually grounded off this pen reel base. Put that little loop of mono on there, you're good to go. And that's a tip from uh, Captain Jimmy Decker. So thanks for showing me that, Jimmy. Anyway, let's, uh, let's head to the map and see what's happening. As usual, I'm gonna head up to the Channel Islands and start talking about what's happening up there. And, um, it's pretty, uh, pretty basic fishing at the islands right now. They're catching some bass, they're catching the occasional small yellowtail, they're catching rockfish, and um, they're catching bluefin tuna if they're going and looking for them. So uh, three quarter boats are getting shots of bluefin whenever they, seems like whenever they go out there, there's a lot of fish up there, they're just spread out. Um, I can't imagine that area's getting much coverage at all. I mean, you, you might get two or three boats out there looking on any given day, so. I'm not surprised that the, uh, the reports aren't indicating that. Um, staying on these bluefin for a minute, you know, these fish are all the way up to San Francisco and stuff now. I mean, they're catching them on the boats out of the Golden Gate, going under the Golden Gate Bridge with 100 pound plus bluefin on there. So these fish can be anywhere. And um, while they can be hard to locate at times, uh, they have been making uh, fairly predictable uh, movements over the last few years. And I'm going to just kind of go out of order here and talk about the offshore fishing in general with the bluefin tuna. Uh, that stuff was up off the west end of Cat, west end of Clementi, out to Nick and SPI for a while. It kind of dried up and like I said last week, it kind of moved down off the east end backside of Clementi and uh, bit surprisingly well over the weekend. I mean the boat fish at night just loaded up. Uh, my friends John and Travis Curry were out, they had John said they brought 753 pounds of fish to a five star for the two of them. And uh, I mean, they were biting big ones, 200 plus pounders. Travis got one over 200. Uh, they just, you know, could have sank the boat with them if they wanted to. But after that weekend, they kind of dried up. And now guys are still getting some fish, but there's guys complaining uh, that there's not the volume's not there anymore. This is not, you know, it's not as good as it was, blah, blah, blah. So what it absolutely comes down to is that full moon we had over the weekend. I mean, if, We've learned anything over the last, you know, seven, six, seven years these tuna have been here is that the days leading up to the full moon are the best bite windows for them. And they were even biting this, for the sport boats during a day late last week. Then what happens, we have the full moon and now everybody's like, oh, the tuna are gone. We can't find the tuna. The tuna swam somewhere where there's no boats looking. I mean, those tuna might be 20 miles off the backside of Clementi, but there's no one looking for them out there. They're, they could be up by San Nick again, but there's not enough coverage to relocate these fish. So what's going to happen, I think, probably, is that the long-range boats or the multi-day trips that run up, you're looking for these fish, you're going to stretch your legs a little bit, look around, and you're going to find them again. And um, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they weren't exactly where they were 
last year at this time or the year before at this time. These fish have become pretty predictable. So um, if you're adding that on your own boat, you know, I wasn't doing a video calling back then, but you could probably go back to my BD Outdoors SoCal scene and go back to this date last year, the year before, and you can probably tell you pretty close to where they're biting, and they're probably still biting there again. So uh, I've said it before, but this time of year we lose coverage because we don't have as many boats fishing. So people jump to the conclusion that these fish are gone. You know, the uh, the Dorado, everybody was saying they were leaving, but they just kind of relocated, and um, they're biting good again. Some boats are doing great, other boats are scratching out, but uh, my buddy Jonathan was out earlier this week and he caught a Dorado, a yellowfin, and a, and a bluefin tuna that came off at the boat base, going on top water by himself on a morning trip. So if you go and look in the reasonable places where these fish have been in the past or where they seem, seem like areas they would be due to currents with water temperature, water color, these fish are going to be in those spots. Uh, Jimmy Decker fished offshore yesterday, and um, he ran out to like the 209 area, got some Dorado, and then he went looking for yellowfin that had been in that general zone, and he finally found some that were within uh, uh, yellowfin on dolphin within 10 miles of Newport Harbor. So, I mean, the opportunity is out there. I see the sport boats getting Dorado, yellowfin, bluefin, and these are three-core day boats that, uh, you know, from San Peter down to, you know, Oceanside. And, uh, you know, speaking of Dorado, the Gale Force got an absolute giant the other day, 53 pounder. And uh, I heard about that fish. I said, that, there's no way that's not the California state record, right? I mean, they, they just don't get that big up here. But apparently in 1990, somebody caught a 66 pounder uh, in basically the exact same area where Jimmy caught his Dorado yesterday. So uh, this stuff is predictable. And uh, just use your experience that you've gained over the last few years and make some educated guesses using your chart using your SST, using your chlorophyll, looking at the structure, looking at where fish have been historically, and there's a good chance if you got good conditions in a place where they've been at this time of year in past years, there's not really any reason they shouldn't be there. Fish spread all over the place right now. And we've got marlin, we've got bluefin, yellowfin, swordfish, deep trap reds are starting to catch those too. I know Bill uh, the priest from Bill's Charter, Pacific Bill's Charters, finally got a nice one the other day. Um, I mean, it's a really good time to be an offshore fisherman, and uh, it's going to take work, though. And I, you know, last week I had someone comment about my uh, about me never really being optimistic about anything, and, and, you know, as as far as the fishing goes. And the reason I, a lot of times I'll downplay stuff is because I, I, you know, I hated nothing more when I was younger than to hear about, oh, it's wide open, get out there, and I'd take the day off work, or I'd save my money to go on an overnight trip, and I get out there, and it, it sucked, you know. So I'd rather hear some actual facts and kind of base my decision off relatable actual results and I think that hopefully you guys want that too. So if you, you know if you want somebody to hype things up and talk about it being the best fish ever, I'm sure you can find plenty of things like that on uh, social media. But uh, yeah, so um, might as well stay on offshore since I'm on it here. Uh, there's still uh, bluefin on the back side of Clemente, there's yellowfin on the front side of Clemente all the way into Newport Harbor basically. I think your better shot is getting, you know, getting out to those outer banks out there, some of the ridges, 1A, 1A2, mackerel bank, 2A9, out there, I guess there's fish right on the front side. I saw a picture on the Thunderbird, I think it was, where they had a, a nice yellowfin in there, you know, half a mile off the island. So those fish, a lot of times, we've had big bluefin up there, same thing, we'd be fishing bass, you can see them come up foaming, just run out there and look. So. You know, that, that, that uh, 500 fathom curve on the front side of Clemente come pretty close to that island. So uh, you don't need to get that far off to uh, have uh, uh, true deep sea fishing, for lack of a better term. Um, yeah, so the sport boats are getting some Dorado. Private boaters are doing good. Uh, it's hit and miss, though. I mean, it's, it's no guarantee you go out there and load up kind of thing. You have to look around, and you have to make some smart decisions. But the opportunities are there. Um, Catalina, there's been... Uh, Bonita biting over their bass. Uh, I know that uh, who went over there? Somebody went over there the other day had good bass fishing. I think it was Jimmy. And uh, Jerry Mayhew's been getting some nice yellows over there pretty regularly uh, on the front side. And, you know, it's, just, it's Catalina, so it's, as long as you got good water temperature and you got some current and you don't have a sea line on you, there's a good chance you're going to catch a bass or 
they need your yellowtail if they're around. Um, along the coast, uh, like I mentioned last week, I went up and fished PV on Thursday afternoon, and uh, it definitely took a while to figure out what was going on with the fish. But once we did, it was pretty easy to repeat that pattern. You know, we drove around for uh, an hour and a half, maybe had two bites on the weedless swim bait. And everything looked pretty good. It was downhill current. It was kind of overcast, which is not ideal for uh, for fishing weedless swim baits in the in the kelp. Um, but we found an area where there was a couple of uh, cormorants diving in the kelp and seagulls sitting on the kelp. And it wasn't like the alpha spot in the bed. But we pulled up there and immediately started getting bites. And um, so fished some more, fished a few more leading edges. Didn't really see anything. But then we saw another spot of cormorants and 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 seagulls. Uh, seagulls were just sitting for the most part, but the cormorants were diving. And we got in there, we, we get more bites. So for the rest of the afternoon there, we just followed that pattern and just looked for those birds diving in the kelp. Then we probably covered six or eight miles, and everywhere those birds were, there was bass biting. And um, the fishing was a little bit better, and we got areas that had some sun as opposed to uh, the overcast. But uh, a lot of short bites on the weedless, so Matt switched to a uh, Seven inch uh, MC jerk shad or MC uh, swim baits uh, split tail slug on an owner's sled head and fish it just like a weasel. Short cast, burn on the surface, and he was just loading up on that thing. And uh, got some nice bass on it, a lot of action. Probably had 20 or 30 bass up there, and then we uh, started to get cloudy again. So we ran down to the break wall, and we had a nice south swell, and the wind was light, blowing us along the wall. And we just fished the crankbait and loaded up on Calico's doing that. So, you know, a little three and a half hour trailer to trailer trip and had, you know, 40 plus bass probably. So, I mean, it's good fishing. If we would have went there during the day with that full moon looming, we probably wouldn't have caught anything. But uh, that afternoon, if you can uh, find an afternoon where the west wind's not blowing strong, that's time to go to PV. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's uh, guys are catching bass along the beach. Most of the sport boats that aren't fishing offshore are fishing sculpin or rockfish. Um, Kind of status quo up and down the coast. Uh, you know, there's some yellows down at the Coronados, I guess. The boats down there getting some fish there, but it's mostly deep summer school stuff, so I don't know how skiff friendly that is. Uh, I, you know, so yeah, that that the, those yellows down there are pretty tough to catch on a skiff if you can't if there's no surface signal at all and you got to cover a lot of water. So you know, if you're if you're going down there, I, you know, you'd be better off jumping on a sport boat if one's running. Um, Mexico offshore, they're having the same fish they had before. Good Dorado fishing with spotty tuna fishing down there. Some days they're getting blue fins, some days they're getting yellow fins. Seems like the Dorado is the most consistent thing. But, um, you know, not every trip's a home run, and you need to get the right kelp or area to, uh, to catch some fish. So, yeah, you know, it's another uh, weekend of good weather here coming up. So there's not really any reason not to go out and catch some fish. I'm probably going to go to PV again tomorrow afternoon. and. Maybe look offshore on uh, Sunday, maybe not. Um, we'll see. But you know, we're coming to the time of the year where I have some extra time in these reports. And you know, if you guys have any questions about tackle or techniques that you'd like covered, uh, or you know, have me look into or whatever, I'd be happy to do that. Just you know, uh, go to our. If you're watching this through BD Outdoors, just click on the YouTube link and then leave a comment in the YouTube uh, comment section. I'll try and get it uh, included in one of my reports coming up. So uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have good luck if you're fishing.